once more a journey unto the spire. I think we had a perfectly, perfectly good attempt last run. Didn't go the distance. But we had this foundation solid. And just a slightly different outcome would have worked out really well for us. Hmm. Eyeing 100 gold into an early shop here. Now, Hexaghost is our act boss. Yeah, I'm perfectly content with that. Random rare, risky, 18 damage for transform two, very risky. This could go very badly, very fast. Like we're talking 20 health into the shop here. <laughs> like real bad. But does go pretty well some of the time. I'm thinking we do one of these two options. Actually, pro probably the yellow option here. It means taking an elite with no rest site beforehand, but we do get a relic and or good card from the shop. And then we get a bunch of upgrades after that. One, two, three, four upgrades. Three elites plus 100 gold bonus shop. Sounds good to me. Finally got a run where Bronze Automaton stole your curse card. You'll love to see it. Uh-oh. You hate to see it. Got worm? No. Got worm? Why? Ow. Got worm? Yes. We never kill next turn either, no matter what I do. That's really bummer. Terrifying. Extra terrifying. Okay. Yeah, imagine if I'd taken a bad transform start. We could just die to that pattern. Spooky. Um, Arma, Dropkick, Fire Breathing. I don't hate fire breathing going into Hexaghost. It's better than Dropkick, surely. How about Armaments, though? Armaments is okay in the early game. It's actually not bad going into a couple more easy pool fights. Can make up for the fact that we don't have an extra card for the elite either. Hmm. But this is an acceptable fire breathing. You really have to respect Hexaghost on Ironclad. The ghost can mess with you. Do love Arma, though. Probably, even in this situation, I think I'd rather take Dropkick over Skip. So probably maybe one Armaments, two Fire Breathing, three Dropkick, four Skip, if I was going to rank these. Although, again, I don't know which of the two is better here. If this was Slime Boss, I think it'd be 100% Fire Breathing. If it was Guardian, it'd be 100% Armaments. Against Hexaghost, it's kind of close. Fire Breathing does help with sentries, meaning we'd have to pick against Laga and Nob. This is best against Lagavulin. This is okay on sentries, though. I'm taking Arma. Slight gain of health. True Grit, Clash, or Thunderclap. Well, I think the time has come. Take a Thunderclap. Can't really take two skills out the gate. As much as I do like True Grit here as a second pick. Maybe if we really load up on attacks at the shop, but I don't know. I think we need that... Uh, that extra Voln and the extra tack in general. Don't think we can take this True Grit. I will take it. Filthy Bird Nerd. Eh. 
Remember, a Thunderclap Strike is one more damage than playing two strikes. Okay, and you should be fine next turn as well. Good Cultist Fight. I like that. Clash really that bad? Clash is really that unreliable. Yeah. You showed you my waffles. Can I have a joke? You can, Potter Putty. You can. I must but think of one. Did you hear about the man who was stealing marinara sauce? He was caught red-handed. No refunds, Swiss shot. So we got three options for common attack here. My ranking would be Pommel Strike 1, Sword Boomerang 2, Wild Strike 3. Yes, you heard it. Wild Strike 3. Skip 4. We've got to take one of these. Almost Strike's definitely my favorite. Damage and draw. That draw matters quite a bit. We still have a shop and another fight to prepare us for the Elite coming up. Let's see what the shop has. It has a Dark Embrace. It has a True Grit on sale. And it has an Orrery. Orrery can be quite strong. Also, just go Dark Embrace True Grit here and, uh, you know, call it a day, quite frankly. It's a power combo of cards. Although we're definitely behind on damage. I almost feel like if I if I do Dark Embrace True Grit, I also have to buy the Fire Potion to make the uh, next Elite manageable. So that would mean not buying the Orary. Scat. Thanks for the Prime sub in the three months. Just want to be part of this cozy sub club? Well, guess what? You are. Yeah, the Die to Gremlin Knob starter pack. I'm a bit less afraid of Gremlin Knob with the True Grit. Hmm. Very nebulous, the benefit of Ori. But there's potentially some good stuff. It is possible for an Ori to contain 15 rares? I think so. I remember something about Ori using the rare chance from the shop, which is higher than the rare chance from a regular card reward. But it depends on how true that is. Ah. This deck is never killing Grumlin Ob in three turns. No way. All right, we should buy the Ori, looking for damage options. Maybe there'll be a Dark Embrace in here. Bust is an option. We can take the True Grit. True Grit, feel no pain. Air Breathing is back. Feel no pain. True Grit. So we take True Grit, True Grit, feel no pain, feel no pain? No, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> but I want to. I most definitely want to. Double drop kick. The power. <laughs> double True Grit, double drop kick. Sounds ambitious. Combust does help. Probably more than fire breathing. Start with that. Our best offense is not very good here. Leaning towards Combust. So we have some better damage against Sentries and Gremlin Ob. Although we don't need as much help against Sentries with a Feel No Pain, actually. Good against Hexagos, too. This is just garbage. Two Feel No Pains feels too much this early on. I don't think I can get away with that either.
Actually, with two sources of Vuln, the drop kicks aren't that bad. And it does give me a way to go infinite. You know what? Screw it. We're doing it. Although I think I still have to buy the fire potion. Infinite. Infinite. We have a spooky turn one. Praise Thunderclap. Curse drop kick. Oh no. Oh no. Terrible. Kill the middle one here, yeah? Are we really infinite? For very generous definitions of infinite, yes. As in, we can eventually form an infinite combo on turn 15 of combat, maybe. Another Pummel Strike does help piece it all together. A Rage would uh, would also be appreciated. Could have gone double Feel No Pain. Whatever, this is arguably our easiest Elite, so I'm not going to complain here. I think I still use the Fire Pot to kill one. Not true. I'd have to skip Feel No Pain? Ugh. Now we need to not skip Feel No Pain. Guess I'll take 20 then. Seems fine. Okay, now things can be made vulnerable. Oh, good. The middle one next. Natmo, thank you so much for the 100 bits. For the dropkick, greed. For the fire potion, greed. Hey. Okay, that could have been worse, I suppose. Get a Panagraph, healing us at the start of the Hexaghost fight. Third dropkick. Is that... good? Let's find out. <laughs> Screw it. Sentry's the rematch. Scarred by flames in this event indicates that we'll fight the three sentries if the adventurer returns. I have two potions. We can definitely take this fight again, and I can rest afterwards. Let's go. Find loot. We found enemies instead. This time I want to kill one of them fast. Take five on turn one. Ooh, actually, we can use the weak pot here to make all three drop kicks live with this thunderclap. We do seven, 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 nine, twenty-one plus nine. 
Be one short, but I get three draws. So this is worth it. Okay, wait, no, and I forgot the drop kick, uh, the thunderclap damage. So we do kill. Nice. That was a great turn. Triple drop kick showing off. I'd like to upgrade Feel No Pain, please. No luck. Upgrade that then. This run deck runs on bananas and spite. Pull these drop kicks out of the deck, please. Thank you. Okay, that was not bad. We use the weak pot, not the fire pot. We get a strike dummy, making all of our strikes, including the double pommel strike, deal three more damage. We're offered a juggernaut, rupture, cleave. I don't feel like we need any of those. Although Cleave comes closest to being useful. We just dealt with sentries twice in a row, so no, we don't need Cleave. Yep. Given the whole triple dropkick thing, this does seem like a good time to upgrade Bash. Although Arma, True Grit, the Pommel Strikes are pretty good as well. But yeah, this feels like a Bash upgrade to me. Bash upgrade into maybe Rest, depending on what the chest has. I don't feel that good with 27 health going into potential Grumlin Knob. If we bottom deck the Vuln, we could take more than 27 health of damage to Grumlin Knob, even with a Fire Pot. Juggernaut to go with Feel No Pain here? Oh, interesting. So expensive, though. Be a very early Jug take. This is not the worst idea. But I think our I think we have scaling kind of sorted out already with the drop kick, so we're not looking to use powers like this. Although we can't drop kick Hexaghost. Presumably. We'll have to beat Hexaghost in a more traditional way. What do we got here? Mercury Hourglass. Three damage per turn every turn. Would have been useful before I fought double sentries, but oh well. Not enough of a difference to make Grumlin Knob not scary here, though I'm thinking that we rest one time, just to be safe. That way we're allowed to take another elite fight. Because if I upgrade here, we might die to this elite, or even the fight after the elite if it goes badly. So let's not do that. It is Grumlin Knob. We do get Bash Dropkick on turn one. Exciting. We should strike because it does quite a bit more damage than, th than Thunderclap. Actually, with the strike dummy, we might have enough damage here. Maybe I underestimated us. Certainly I did. In fact, we get a two-turn kill. What am I on here? Complete waste of an upgrade. Oh, well. Could you build a deck around... Could you build this deck around Sadistic Nature? No. I, I really don't think it works... Sadistic Nature works on Ironclad at all. Ironclad just does not do enough debuffs. Even if you had multiple Thunderclaps with um, Champ Belt, it's, it's not that good. Silent can make a deck around Sadistic Nature, but I don't think Ironclad can. Would I snap pick Rampage? Oh, the questions that they ask me. I don't hate this bloodletting. Deck has quite a bit of card draw thanks to double pommel strike. 
extra energy could help us out. And Ink Bottle draws more cards too. So I'm going to grab this Bloodletting. Stacking a little bit of health for a bit of energy. Full blocked. Get hourglassed. Full blocked again. This isn't going to go in your favor, Slime. But quit even trying. Uh, that's a really good split if I just defend here. Take seven. Or I can play Pummel Strike. In the 28. We can kill one of them next turn. And I've got a Fire Potion for backup. This is fine. Both attacking. But I only take three this time. That was a net gain. Good. Set up ink bottle. Okay, we probably don't want to add too many cards to this deck, although Bloodletting Whirlwind with Thunderclap is tempting. What's our answer to multi-enemy fights, anyway? Hmm. It's not a concern right now. Your pot's very good, actually. I don't want the Snicker Oil. I'm going to upgrade... Rugrit? And then maybe Arma. Give me sentries one more time. Ah. That's not sentries. Not sentries at all. Oh well. Have 18 damage to your face. Just keep the Vuln up for next turn. You know, this is actually kind of working. Ornamental Fan. If we play three attacks in one turn, we'll gain four block. That makes doing a drop kick infinite a lot more viable. If only we had strength for Heavy Blade. If you play three drop kicks in one turn, gain four block. Rage at home. Okay, but how do we actually kill Hexaghost here? We upgrade Pummel Strike. We upgrade Arma. Yeah, let's upgrade Arma. I'm a little bit afraid of Hexaghost, but we have a lot of health. Actually, too much health. Hexaghost is going to wreck us on turn two. Uh-oh. Please don't kill me. Strike Dummy is going to go a long way here. So is uh, Mercury Hourglass, believe it or not. And we never miss Vuln because of Fear Pot, so I'm not too, too worried. Yeah, just kill on turn two. Easy. Easy, easy. Just kill on turn two. Now you're talking. Mm. Yeah, I'm afraid of this fight, so let's just start right now. Seven by six, but I do get to play three defense here. Oh. So that's enough health left to survive Inferno, notably. Delete. Defend. 
Sweet defense. Lots of vulnerable applied, meaning these drop kicks will work pretty consistently here. So I'm wondering if we want to trade damage a little bit more here. Certainly we want to do with this. It's a Volnub. Looks like we're on pace here. Feels good. That's right, you get two burns from Siron, the highest ascension. And yes, it is miserable. Just miserable. GG. We're through the fight and with a potion to spare. Too bad. We're offered feed, limit break, demon form. Feed is interesting. Who's demon form? Where we're headed, we shouldn't need demon form. But that's only if we can speed this up with more card draw and more energy. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Let's try feed here. More max health gives us more resilience, more time to set up in fights, which is the way for us to win. Runic Cube, Pandora's Box, Busted Crown. Ooh, that's a pretty good Pandora's Box, actually. Although Strike Dummy says questionable. We would get nine transforms, and every transform that isn't a striker defend could be something we could boil out of the deck with true grit other option runic cube whenever we lose health draw a card works nicely with bloodletting and our deck in general but i'm willing to open the pandora's box here find out what's in the box i don't like busted crown limiting our card options that seems extra spooky let's go with the pandora's Transform nine cards could be amazing, could be terrible. We get another drop kick, another thunderclap, thunderclap drop kick, and very importantly, we get a burning pact. The rest is just garbage attacks. So we got quite a bit of bad stuff here. Rampage, Searing Blow, Blood for Blood, all pretty bad. But burning pact, thunderclap drop kick, that's what we wanted. So not terrible. We have no defense, but we have Ornamental Fan, our biggest fan, is here to defend us. We're also going to be aggressively removing the bad cards from this deck at shops. I do mean aggressively. Uh, we remove Searing Blow to start, and then probably Sword Boomerang next. Blood for Blood seems like it could be really good. Expanding Flan says, I tried making a Searing Blow deck once. I, re I would recommend trying it again. It's actually pretty good sometimes. Um, this is an awkward fight because of artifacts. I think we suffer in this fight quite a bit, actually. Gotta be Arma, Thunder, Thunder, and then we can play Bash. But I don't think that'll be enough to save us here from getting destroyed by the 11 by 2 I can't even play Bash. Um, so let's Pummel Strike instead. Alright, now we can do it. Okay, I was actually lying when I said it wouldn't make a difference. Oh, we're so close here. All right, I'll be back for you, Feed, maybe. Bummer. It's not worth taking 11 to maybe Feed. Upgraded Pummel Strike, that's great, because it does 13 damage and it draws two. 
do want more draw at this time. If I get a peace pipe, would I rather upgrade a card or remove a card at fire? With this deck, I'd, I would want to remove as many cards as possible. For sure here. This deck wants to remove cards more than anything else. In fact, if I could, I would remove all of the cards in this deck except for three or four. Which Act 2 hallway fight would make the most fair Act 1 elite fight? Chosen would be pretty reasonable. Yeah, Chosen is just Gremlin Knob, kind of. Kind of. Could buy a waffle here, but it's not that much health, right? We get 17 plus 7, 24. 24 health for this waffle. That's pretty good, but I don't think I need it. There's another shop coming up, so I'm going to save my cash. We're not making statuses right now. Although Evolve does help with a drop kick type deck. Bird nerds get destroyed. Good. Like that turn one just fine. Uh-oh. That's not good, though. But I do have T-Clap into Pummel here. Could be a good time for the Fire Pot, too, actually. Hmm. There's no need to potion here. So bloodletting, pummel strike, feed. Take four. Next fight might be an elite, so setting up ink bottle is actually very reasonable. goes up. There's the Rage. Whenever you play an attack this turn, gain block. Heck yeah. That card's awesome. Stinky power through. No way. Give me a Rage. The Ragening begins. And I think I want an event over a combat. I think so. Now all of our cards say block. Do I read the book? I don't really want Necronomicon. Or Nilries. Mm -mm. Readings for nerds. Nilries could be more drop kicks, but I don't need more drop kicks. I need less non drop kicks. And Nilrees is never that. I think I say no for once. We don't read the Cursed Tome. Consider buying another Rage. Oh no! No! That's fine, actually. Uh, let's lose the Rampage. Ocart Monster with 24 months of support. And I'll get back here. Actually, another rage does seem kind of awesome. 
even though it ostensibly might slow us down. I do love it, unironically. Let's try double rage deck. Let's try double rage deck. But we want to upgrade Burning Pact first? We do. Our draw is the only thing that matters at the moment, I believe. We're going to face off against the Book of Stampening. Let me add some wounds. I'm going to colorless potion here. Secret technique. Allows me to burning pact. Feel no pain, secret technique, burning pact. What does that actually get me towards? Nothing really helpful here. Just taking swift strike is fine. It's a free 10 damage. And yeah, we're going to draw one off ink bottle in a moment as well. Hmm. Oh, Strike Dummy. That's right. It does even more damage. It's actually 15. Well, good. We do get Bloodletting. That's actually amazing. Because then I get to full block. And do a bunch more damage. That's a good turn. We should just play Bash. So that the future drop kicks work. 13 block just from playing three attacks. This is a really cool deck. Is this Arma Trigret? Looks like it. Put the Pommel Strike on top. I don't think I had a feed there. So I might have. Still hard to feed, that's okay. Feel no pain plus. Tempting. However, bean fire. If this deck is going to do what it wants to do, which is reduce the deck down to only drop kicks and rage, then bean fire's ability to exhaust multiple cards at the same time is exactly what we want. And we already have one feel no pain, right? No, we, uh, yeah, we do. We do. We do. Upgrades from here are probably more card draw. The Pommel Strikes, the Feel No Pain's Tempting, the Rages look actually really good as upgrades. Look at the Rages upgraded. Then we have a real source of block. Ooh, cheap removes? Get in here. Good reason to go to two or even three shops next act. Go this way. It's all about the removes from here. This is vaguely tempting. Use this now. Thunderclap is more block than Arma is. Cute. I'll allow it.
I'm not going to be able to feed on this thing. That's true, actually. Although I can get more regen, so I should at least do that. I don't need a third thunderclap. I think bronze automaton. I think upgrading our card draw is the only thing that really matters. Ooh, I'm really happy to fight these three. They'll give us the red mask, applying one week on turn one and crucially removing one artifact from enemies that have artifacts. In addition, they're not that hard to kill. Holy drop kicks, Batman. Holy rages, Batman. Could have played rage for one more ink bottle there. Your next kid. Fire doesn't kill bear. Oh well. We do eighteen, fifteen, perfect. Delicious. Havoc can delete cards, but it's unreliable as all get out. I'm not desperate enough to take Havoc here, I don't think. I don't think so, anyway. Ooh. Let's turn one. Take this, Shelled Parasite. Thirty-four block. With the Rages. Unfortunately, now both Rages are in the discard pile, so this turn's kind of miserable. That's just how it is sometimes. Good news is, I can still eat this fool. Not bad. Second wind deletes cards. So does True Grit, though. Most of the cards in the deck are attacks, so probably the True Grit, actually. Okay. So this is the real test, the Bronze Automaton fight. Does the deck do the thing quickly enough or not? I don't actually know. That's a pretty good fiend fire. Just delete these four cards. We have two drop kicks and two more upgraded pummel strikes. So I don't need any of these cards. Let's lose these. The goal is to exhaust cards other than the drop kick quickly as we can, basically. Put Burning Pact on top here. These are fine. Let's close line. If I bash now, I can Thunderclap Dropkick next turn. I could probably do that. Of 
perfect. This gives me the bloodletting. Get rid of sword boomerang. Here we go. Get rid of Bash. I think it's working. There we go. Er, wait. Uh, almost. Let's do bloodletting, burning packs. Now we're there. Drop kick draws, drop kick. And that'll happen in a loop over and over again. So that's good. We only took five turns to assemble our infinite combo here, which we can now use to win this fight. And yes, we can grab our feed here, and we should, so that we can also feed. Although I can't armaments feed because I did I did delete the arma. Cool fight. Would I take a dual wield? Probably not, because I already have multiples of all the cards required. Delicious. What about an exhume? Nope. More cards is really not helpful. Thought I didn't like this infinite? I don't, but doesn't mean I'm not going to use it to win if that's what uh, the run kind of calls for. It's the easiest winning strategy we could put together, so that's what we're doing. And you want to be really committed to this if you're, if you're trying to do it. So adding other types of cards, really not what we want to do. But removing cards is what we want to do. And it might feel weird to go into Act 3 on 3 base energy, but with two fewer cards here, thanks to Empty Cage, I think it's going to be just fine, actually. I'm going to lose the Sword Boomerang and the Clothesline. The Clothesline. But yeah, the smaller this deck gets, the better. Bonkalonk, did you hear about the famous actor that decided to remove all the cards from their deck? That was uh, Nicholas Empty Cage. Gotta go here. And Smiling Mask says go here and go here. Bikers looking scary? You're not wrong. <laughs> spikers are kind of scary. Hmm, spooky. Spooky spikers. What do we need to beat Time Eater? Believe it or not, nothing. We already beat Time Eater. The two Rages beat Time Eater. Maybe an Evolve would make things a little bit easier. I would take an Evolve at this point. But we we actually are just fine against Time Eater. Uh-oh. It's happening, chat. Help. Could fire pot to feed here. Feels like unnecessary. 
Be back. Is the block before or after? After. Okay. Good enough. Good enough, I say. Ooh. Hmm. Do have eighty nine health? This is tough. Yeah, this is a tough one. These two will, at minimum, do quite a bit of damage to me. Although I do get a heal immediately here. I've got two pretty good potions. We can kill them relatively fast, actually. This is not that bad, as far as fights go. We don't really want the card reward, but we do want the money and potentially the relic. Peace Pipe is a rare relic, so that would be kind of huge. Dead Branch would be a skip. But we could get Burner, we could get Helix. Might get Max Health. I think we're okay here. I have a really hard time imagining us dying to these fools. Really hard time imagining that. Happy to use my potions as necessary. Uh, I'm going to energy pot to bash. Bash the front one? Yeah. Bash the front one. Hey, that was super worth it. Even got the feed. Get Charon's Ashes. When exhausting a card, deal three damage to all enemies. And I don't think we want any of these. So that helps a bit with AoE. Good for Reptomancer. In case you run into her here. That's good. Uh, overall, that's pretty good. Uh-oh. Time to spin the wheel, though. Card remove, card remove, card remove. Let's go. Money. Even better, actually. This is not one, not two, but 300 gold. You get 100 gold times the accurate from the Grumlin, and that's a great prize. So we got an old coin worth of money there. Right before the shop, too. Very nice. I got 99 hit points. But what about deep breath? 
Okay, definitely we remove a card. Is it ever unironically hand drill? <laughs> Actually hand drill? Are we fighting Donu Deca? Oh shit, we are. It's actually pretty good against Donu Deca. This might be the only situation where hand drill might even be half good. The best hand drill I've ever seen. Yeah, if not now, then when? Exactly. When you break an enemy's block, apply too vulnerable. Don't mind if I do. And I guess the blood for blood is superfluous now. It is. Lantern's okay. I'm also pretty happy not buying anything here. I intend to go this way. Upgrades that are important include what? Almost strike war cry? Feel no pain. What about deep breath? It's an option. We can upgrade it to make it a draw one card. It's it's kind of... I mean, it does help, sort of. It It is card draw. And it can do actually interesting things with our exhaust cards. Actually, yeah, we'll take deep breath over lantern here. Let's see what we can do. Oh no, not the single orb walker. Whatever will I do about that? Little Biker Nana, thanks for the prime sub and the 13 months of support. All drop kicks always has been. Don't need an unupgraded true grit. Draw one more. Falling. Armaments, feel no pain, drop kick. I mean, I've got a couple of spare drop kicks. It's actually not the worst uh, loss of Arma either. We got most of the upgraded cards upgraded already. Twitch crap the bed? <laughs> it sounds like it might have. I'm going to lose Arma here. Like the drop kicks. And we're going to upgrade war no, bloodletting, actually. Energy's good. Blue key from this chest. Yeah, it, now it's showing me one viewer. It's me. I'm the only viewer. You're all faked with chat. This whole thing has been a hallucination by yours truly. Do I have an answer to five burns? I don't think I do. Okay. Deep breath those back into the draw pile, then rage. Being attacked for 45? Well, guess what? It's not going to stop me. I played a uh, thunderclap there, actually. Wait, hand drill? <laughs> hand drill of the gods. Let's go, hand drill. Get the metallicize. Out of here.
My turn never ends. Nib. Every tenth drop kick deals double damage. Love it. M -m -m multi feed. The enemy encounter. Andrill, I'm counting on you. Andrill, go! my back pocket. Don't think I'll ever need to use that, but kind of nice to have. Cutie alert! Don't worry, though. There's only one person on the cutie list. Panthiron, thanks for the 500,000 channel points. Spending enough time in the channel. Get that half mil, heck yes. That you added right away. Five hundred thousand hours watched. All right, one point per hour. And IBT Dark, thanks for the prime sub of the nine months of support. I'd like to give a special moment of thanks to my lone viewer for getting me here. block, huh? Easy. Oh, you're already there. Well, let me fix that. I was thinking about looking for that, but then I chose not to. Let me fix that. There you are. All caps for you. Aha! There you go. Upgraded cutie. And Thyron Plus. And your original position in the list is preserved, too.
Let's do this one more time. This just always draws a drop kick or the deep breath, which then draws a drop kick. Excellent. Entropic Brew. Okay, I'll take that. And one more elite before this shop where we get another remove. I might even start removing drop kicks, unironically, although I think the unupgraded pummel strike is actually perhaps our next best remove. Giant Head is going to have a bad time, though, that's for sure. No question about that. Giant Head has a very bad time here. Since each drop kick does more damage than the last, pretty much. Just dunk some cards here. Cards I never want to draw again. It's another Thunderclap remove. We're going to want the Thunderclaps for um, Donu and Dekka and then Shield and Spear fights. They'll help there. But for the most part, I do agree. Stone won't do much. Another Rage is not needed. Limit Break doesn't do anything. I'll take Blood Pot for more durability against Heart. And uh, Medical Kit Dark Embrace will make this so much easier than it was already going to be, going into Heart. <laughs> but here's the truth. All people in the chat are me. And now, for you to be convinced of this, I will send this message from all of my accounts. Oh no. What have I done? But yeah, Dark Embrace Medkit means life is easy. <laughs> Perhaps the only time I will tolerate a copy pasta. I do, I <laughs> what have I done? Okay, we got a recall here. Don't upgrade. Don't upgrade. Go infinite. <laughs> Embrace over double clap. Any clappers in the chat? Hmm. It's actually a tough call. Maybe it is double clap. Although Dark Embrace draws one immediately. Go double clap. I gotta get rid of these artifact charges. That way I can bash Dropkick on this turn. 
Pendril's nice, but they actually don't get any block until turn three. Further evidence for why Handrill is so awkward. Even in the fight where you want it to be good, it's not as good as you want it to be. Get rid of that card. Get rid of that card. Where I'm going, we don't need bloodletting. Kind of expensive. I guess I have to upgrade Dark Embrace going into Act 4 here as we only have the three energy per turn. It's kind of hard to spend too. Oh, hand drill hourglass interaction. The power. The sheer power. Karen's Ashes triggered the hand drill. That was pretty sweet, actually. Hand drill just did real stuff there. that. This is only the first boss. I'll set up relics for um, Act 4, but I'm not going to bother for second boss. It's only time eater. Time eater is not a threat, right? Time eater is not a threat. Probably not. Is this Thunderclap Fiendfire? Keep one Vuln card. Although that would make next turn kind of weak. Oh, no, no, no. We apply lots of Vuln thanks to, you guessed it, Hand Drill. That's a good Fiendfire, actually. We draw a lot immediately, too.
Can't delete that. Not much left in the deck, though. Almost strike, then. It's fine. Struggle to see what we need this bloodletting for. Cards too many currently. Yeah. Shoot. All right, we can't keep this feed. That's what I learned. Bring time meter below half next turn. That'll be fine. It's toe play anyway. Turn time meter is purging, removing all their debuffs, so there's not a lot to gain from playing any of our cards beyond maybe the burning pack to get rid of this true grit. Let's get rid of true grit here. And we can just break the block to apply Vuln, or more Vuln anyway. So we need the initial. Slow and steady wins the race here. Just gotta whittle it down turn over turn, but we can make enough block each turn that it really doesn't matter that much. Turn seems good. Oh, our viewers are back. Our loyal viewers. Our team. I think we kill here. Pretty sure we kill here. Yeah, we do. Uh, so I guess I can't really set up the relics, huh? Not in the way you'd want to. We can up the ink bottle a little bit here. Careful. Got nervous. <laughs> what comes after eight? I don't know, but I don't want to find out, you know? To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? Ready your blade, deal in 2092. Have I been here before? I don't think the hand drill has, actually. Hand drill, you're new here. Welcome to the end of the game. 
We're healing with meal tickets, so let's get that Dark Embrace upgraded. Make that nice and cheap. Do I know the highest score I've had entering Act 4? I feel like we've seen... We've seen 3,000 before. I'm pretty sure. Okay, now that we've been through Donodeca, I think we can lose one of our two Thunderclaps. Field and Spear will only have one artifact each, and the Hand Drill will help with them. Bean Fire is oddly bad, now that we got rid of all the junk, too. Let's lose one clap. Could buy a different potion, but I like this potion. What? Keep Bash? Because it's multiple turns of Voln, and we're going to want it during the heart fight, for sure. Feed could be removed. Although Feed gets rid of itself just by playing it. That's not too hard. But yeah, um, why keep Bash? So that I can do this. You first, I guess. Uh, hmm. Slightly concerning. Give me Dark Embrace. That'd be the easiest way for this to go down. Good. I might have a full loop already. Good. This 57. Good. Great. Excellent, dare I say. Vuln to start next turn. good. We're going to be full health into the hard fight. What you want to see, for sure. A surprisingly slow infinite here. I feel like we could have been there already. Now we are.
setting up ink bottle here. Yep. Blue candle means we're going to exhaust the Ascender's Bane by playing it too. Now we can play every card in the deck. That's kind of cool. Impervious slows the deck down, but seems like it buys valuable time. I'll take that one. Onwards to the heart. Let's freaking go. Excellent turn one. We're very happy playing this upgraded bash to get our Vuln down for the hard fight. We could double drop kick turn one. As long as we have at least one rage in play, then. I think I only want one rage in play, actually. Leave this one. Okay. Good enough. Get a whole bunch of statuses added to the draw pile here. This can be a little spooky. But Dark Embrace is here. Feel No Pain is also here. Let's just play both of these. Ow. Heal me. Another healing potion and a flex pot. Cool. Get rid of Thunderclap. We can just use the bash. No need to be afraid of bloodletting in this fight. happening. You'll love to see it. All right, we could lose a few of these cards. Um, why don't we put down lots of Vuln and then get rid of Bash? We don't need Bash anymore. Or True Grit, for that matter. We can also lose Feed if we want to. Looks like these cards are pretty good, though. This is exactly all of my cards. Let's lose one dropkick then. Don't need three of them. Want everything to fit into one hand here. So we'll take Beat of Death at the start of each turn, but that should be the only damage we take. Rage is all the block we need. Pretty cool. Yeah, Flex Potion will save us time later on. Probably on the final turn. That'll be nice. for next turn as well. Nice. 
my face, though. Blam. Look at that heal. Bonk. And now for our final performance. Take a deep breath and drop kick that fool. GG. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.